Japan's lunar lander has touched down with a soft landing, but there's been a glitch. Its solar panels aren't working, so unless it's fixed, the spacecraft will run out of power. But experts say that the mission has achieved 99% of its aims. This was all about precision landing. They, they, they haven't confirmed the exact precision of the landing, but you know they're the fifth they're the fifth nation to land successes on the moon, and I think that is a huge success. Flight engineers are pouring through the spacecraft's data and will report next week on what went wrong. But an awful lot went right. They successfully tested an advanced face recognition system to home in on the landing site. And it also deployed one of its mini lunar rovers, able to hop where no rover has hopped before. Not another one, which can literally roll back the frontiers of knowledge. It's a new way of doing space exploration and a big part of it is to bring down the costs um, so that we can de-risk these missions, do more of them at a faster turnaround and hopefully get both more science and exploration out of each one. The team at the Open University are building an instrument for a future mission involving both Japan and India as well as the UK. Japan's achievement is the start of a new rush to the moon. India got there last year and later in 2024 there'll be several US attempts. And by the end of the decade there'll be Chinese and European missions. So it's all getting very interesting. In the 1960s and 70s it was all NASA. On the moon one day. But now it's an international race. A small fleet of spacecraft are on their way to lay the ground for humans to return. They're going because there are minerals and resources on the moon which will be used to build launch sites to go to Mars and beyond. And this time, the plan is to stay for the long term. Palab Ghosh, BBC News.